All right. Hi, and I can hear you and see you. Excellent. And I can do as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good to see you. I'm very happy to to hear the first record after five years and see and, and I can speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice speaking with you. Because it's a long time that we speak together. I think it was the last interview. What we did was 2006. Oh, that's a while ago. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit. <laughs> it's a long time ago. We are getting older. And, uh, okay. <laughs> time marches on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but good. After all this 42 years, you... You uh, surprise me because the concept uh, is a little bit different than the other one. For example, the record Lilith, Lilith, or uh, the married, the heaven, uh, marriage of heaven and hell. Uh, from where you get the inspiration for this one now? I've always been interested in Dionysus, and um, I dropped little lines about this character and other songs along the way. But uh, I was determined to go through and explore the ideas about this particular creature. Um, he's one of many dying and resurrecting God people, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've always been interested in the idea of um, resurrection. You know, it's nice to come back after being dead, I suppose. Uh, and I like, I like the ambiguity that he's got. Yeah. On one side, there's relaxation, peace. The other, it could be a violent exploration. So um, it's all what you do with it. And I like these ideas of, of um, uh, do we need, do we want to have the wild side able to be expressed in society? I think, yeah, we need it. Without mm -hmm. it, we go nuts and and uh, that's not a good thing. So um, yeah, the idea of freedom, restraint, control, release. And I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in freedom and i think with freedom uh with great freedom comes great responsibility so yes. the album explores these ideas mm -hmm. uh, how you was involved in the songwriting because i know you are always writing songs you're writing anything yeah i just uh i started writing this oh probably when i was doing the last records the mm -hmm. box set stuff, all those tracks. And um, I just, I write, yeah, as you say, I write always. I'm always like a day or night doesn't go by where I'm not writing something. So uh, I gathered this music and it just started coming together very rapidly. So I just kept going with it and had it all there. And um, and then I just let it sit there. I just, I, 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 I went into the studio and I laid everything down, just piano, all the ideas, just played the piano and then I showed it to Edward and he was like I love this I want to do it let's do it let's do it when are we going to do it when are we going to do it he kept bugging me so I said all right we're going to do it now and then I brought him in and he had to learn everything and uh we just you know went from there once once the uh uh all the keyboards were done already so then I did, did all the uh uh recorded Edward's guitars and then I started putting the vocals on and, and snowballed from there mm -hmm. but I think it's uh, my opinion is it's a little bit more on the in the violent direction, uh, but also you describe a little bit uh, the opposites uh, of everything, the contrary situation in this. Uh, yeah, record. it's generally it's generally a very violent record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when it's not so violent, it can be melancholy. Yeah, the guy is off. He's quite angry, and. Um, Lurking within that story of Dionysus, there is other things going on. I'm speaking mm -hmm. about what's happening in the world and life on yeah. the street today and what goes on in my street, on my house, my life. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very violent record, perhaps more, perhaps maybe our most violent record in, in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you see what, what's going on in the world now. The world is totally changing with the war in the Ukraine and everything. It's a totally uh, uh, crazy world at the moment. And uh, you must bring, you cannot write always over love, peace and everything. You must put also a little bit from this in the songs. Yeah, all 
all of our records are really just a snapshot of what life is like or what my life is like at a given moment. So, mm -hmm. um, and how I see the world and this is, this, this is my vision for this, for this year. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit surprised because I know you, uh, you always have a new record and then you have also uh, a maxi CD and now you have only 11 songs, but 77 minutes. <laughs> I was a little bit surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said it all there. Um, I, I, there was no need to make it any longer. The, the, the record was complete. And the next one, <laughs> as I was as I was writing this record, I was also writing other song cycles, if you will. And I've got the next record, the follow up to Dionysus, already partly recorded. So it's uh, it's underway, and it's a different sort of record. I mean, it's similar, some somewhat musically to Dionysus, but it's a, it's a different mood. It's maybe more um, I don't know, more autumn like. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. different kind of kind of record. Uh, so we're already into that already. So we're, we're, we're blasting me out. And I've got the next record planned for after that. So it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's been an unstoppable um, ride with the uh, with the, yeah, the yeah. composing. <laughs> uh, I never compare you with other bands because I know you are you have so much different backgrounds in your music classic everything and I can never compare you to other bands because then I put you in a box and you hate this um, but I think a lot of journalists don't understand this because I read a, a couple of bad reviews because uh, I I like I love the record because it's you it's totally you what do you think from this what they write well, I think I, I haven't seen too many of the, of those. Uh, I, I, I maybe I haven't looked deep enough. I, I don't know. But uh, I'm I've gotten validation from from people who've gone to the Juilliard School of Music, Manhattan School. Of Music. I mean, real professors who teach music. I don't really give a shit what some yeah. somebody says if they don't like the record. You know, whatever. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. You, you need a certain amount. Of, uh, music musical experience uh, to, to understand a largely what Burge Steel does because it's, it's not your basic format. And if that's not your bag, then you don't like it, like the record. Not, not a problem for me. I think yeah. it's a bloody good record. And uh, I think we've had a lot of uh, really good records over the years. And um, people want to maybe take a step in another direction, open their ears, hmm. grow a little bit, hmm. you know. Uh, I think yeah, it, it sort of requires a certain amount of yeah, musical experience, musical maturity, whatever you want to call it, yeah. you know, yeah. not for everyone. And I know that. And that's uh, that's all right. They can go listen to something yeah. else. Yeah. But I think that's the problem for many people. They like to take the bands or the singers or uh, the artists in one box. You fit in this box and uh, they don't look to yeah. other sides. And I think that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's largely the thing. And that's, you know, the record speaks about that sort of thing about, you know, putting putting uh, putting Dionysus in, in one bag, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. He's not, it's multifaceted. He's a very dangerous character. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and uh, that's, you cross him in the wrong, and, and if he's not in the right frame of mind, he's going to wallop you. You know, that's, you know, yeah. we, have, we have that in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you released in front from the new record three singles is this today important for a band to release before the album release singles uh, yeah this was this was really something that the, the label wanted to do you know mm -hmm. they had their idea of how to present the record and I said, all right, we, we're going to do singles. Let me think about which ones we'll do in which order. So mm -hmm. I, I chose that uh, spiritual warfare first. I thought that was representative of most of the record. It's got the general mood. And I thought that would be easy to digest for people. And uh, or the second one could have been uh, the first one, uh, Gethsemane. But um, 
Yeah, I chose to do it that way, and I, I thought, okay, they're both rather long, so let's follow up with the shortest song we've ever done, Black Earth and Blood, <laughs> two minutes and 24 seconds. You know? Two minutes so, and 22 uh, minutes? It's yeah, in 24 minutes. seconds. Yeah, two minutes. <laughs> it's the shortest thing we've ever done. It didn't need to be any longer. I said yeah. everything I wanted to say within those, you know, that framework, and uh, that was it. So I said, all right, it's done. Next. Yeah. <laughs> but normally you write seven uh, from seven to ten to twelve minutes. That's normal for you. Yeah, well, this, we have the longest song we've ever done on record with the Ritual of Descent, which is like a little over 12 minutes. And we've got the shortest song we've ever done so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> record, those two records. Songs. <laughs> two records. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a... It's, uh, It's it's interesting how that uh, kind of wor worked out. I, I could have I could have you know made the record longer I suppose, but uh, I said everything I wanted to say within those songs and and yeah, and that was yeah. it. I, yeah. The next record could very well be uh, a double album, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if I'll do it that way. I may do it like you know, Act One, Act Two, Part One, Part Two kind of thing. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Marriage yeah. of uh, Heaven and Hell, Part One and Part Two. It's the same, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, Atreus, yeah. you know, same thing. Yeah, yeah this is also the same. Uh, you, are still, like that. We'll yeah. you are still working with Edward? Yeah, he's on the record. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. A long time now, no? I know Edward. Our musical history goes back, and our friendship goes back prior to Bird and Steel. We were like 14, 15 years old. We were playing yeah. together, doing like Led Zeppelin and Queen and Deep Purple and stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, I always wanted him to be in Bird and Steel. And actually, many, many years ago, when Jack was still in the band, we tried to have two guitars, because I always thought that might be interesting, too, you know? But that didn't really work out so well. Mm. Uh, and uh, we just then went with Edward, yeah. I think one guitar player is more than enough. <laughs> It's enough. It's, if you do it, you know, for, for on stage, um, it's rather interesting because you can do all those things that you did on the record, you know, doubling stuff and whatnot, mm -hmm. harmonies and whatnot. Yeah, like, like Iron Maiden do. They've got three guitar players, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it, can be, it can be musically interesting on stage, you know. You don't need it on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go a little bit to another theme because I, you know, I look always in the internet. I like to have interesting things to ask you. And I found a video. You uh, you like to cook? Oh, yeah. Really delicious. Because <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. I do. I love to cook. <laughs> you know, oh, I was, I, was, I was very drunk during that. <laughs> <laughs> the wine was going in the food and in me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the cat in front from the from the from the screen oh, yes. always. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was my cat. <laughs> Thalia. Yeah, she's no longer with us, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> But it's so great because I must laugh. I sit here and I must laugh. You are cooking uh, jalapenos and other things, and add a little bit white wine. <laughs> yeah yeah and there's there's always a cat involved i i've got uh uh when i was doing that video i think that i had eight now i've got five yeah five cats yeah, yeah. five cats yeah huh? there's one next to me now you can't see her but yeah. she's on the floor there <laughs> i i had a cat but for me uh unfortunately i cannot have because i have allergy for dogs and cats oh. and uh Yeah. I must give my uh, to other people because I have always everything close, everything close, and it's not so good. I understand that my sister was like that growing up, so I was not able to keep any of the cats, and I, I'm just yeah. I'm very uh, passionate about them. So mm -hmm. uh, once I moved out many many years ago, I was on my own, uh, which I've been for a long time. I got cats, yeah. Yeah, many cats. <laughs> I love cats because they have their own head. They have their own mind and uh, they yeah. do what they like to do, not what you like to do. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs not. Dogs always say, please sit down and they sit. Cats, no. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no, you can't do that with a cat. No, no, no. Uh, I'd like to come back a little bit to the video because at the end you told, oh. um, next time I make a past Vesuvius. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe, maybe that maybe. was it. Yeah. <laughs> you make this? I, uh, I would like to, yeah, I would like to do that. I'd like to do another one. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, was, that was a, that is, I think. Yeah, I think that show is still going on. That that yeah. that gentleman still does it. The brutally delicious show. Yeah, he he's got a lot of a lot of interesting uh, musicians <laughs> on there cooking their favorite dishes. <laughs> I I love this one. Um, I come now to the tour because your uh, Virgin Steel was a long time not on tour, especially in Europe. Uh, yeah. I know you play in August in Spain. Yep. I come to this show. We will really? see us in. We will see us wow. in. Uh, I live in Spain. Oh. I Great. live on the I live on the Canary Islands now for twelve years, and I come wow. to I come to the show Leyendas del Rock only for Saturday, and then we see us also. Have you more plans for tu for tour? Yeah, we're doing, at the end of August, we're doing a date in Crete, mm -hmm. a festival called Over the Wall, I think it's, yeah, Over the Wall. Uh, and then we're in the middle of organizing dates for the autumn. We've got dates for Italy, and yeah. I'm speaking with people about some dates in Greece also. So we're gradually getting into the... Uh, Uh, the live arena once again. It's almost like like a new band in a way because um, Edward is of, of course on the record and he's on the next record and he'll be on the one after that. But he's not always able to go on the road with us. Mm -hmm. So I've got another gentleman on board now along mm -hmm. with Josh. Josh is still in the band. He's been with me since 2000. It's like 23 yeah. years. Yeah. So he's on board. Uh, and I have another gentleman named Tommy Vitali. Mm -hmm. He's got uh, his whole career. He's got several records out. He's a very excellent guitar player. So they're both. So we have two guitars now on stage. You'll see. And um, drummer is new. He's uh, well, he's not that new. He was on dates with us about six or seven years ago. He mm -hmm. started with us. So mm -hmm. uh, he's with him and uh, on uh, bass and key extra keys yes. i've got i've got the person i did some of the uh gothic voodoo anthems record with mm -hmm. uh the female lynn delmato she plays some stuff with with mm -hmm. me on that on that uh i've i've worked with her in a band called carnival of souls that's going back to like 2000 or so mm -hmm. yeah. that was me edward Edward was on his hard. Josh was playing bass. She was in the band, and a drummer, for the drummer from The Exorcist, uh, was mm -hmm. the drummer for that, that group. And mm -hmm. we did, uh, we did all sorts of mostly covers that we yeah. rearranged. I rearranged and rewrote them, as I always do with a cover, and uh, and then some Bird and Steel stuff. And we developed a very good, interesting chemistry. So even though she, she plays the same instrument as me. I'm like, I don't have a big, massive ego about like that. I said, do you play? Uh, I can just sing and jump around and be with the audience. So brought that in and, and you play some bass as well. And, uh, you know, it's fun for the live situation to do that. We actually have uh, like three hours of music that she she and I can do alone, you know, yeah. just just keyboards and, and, and vocals more stripped down. And uh, mm -hmm. we've done dates like that on, in New York. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's actually... In a way, for me, it's it's actually more enjoyable because yeah. I can actually hear what I'm actually doing on stage. Sometimes mm -hmm. we walk out on these festivals mm -hmm. and then everybody's got their amp on 11 and the drums are on 4,000 and they say, what? Where am I in this? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but uh, I know you play in America, I think only in the East Coast, not in the West Coast, no? Or it's not true? Oh, we've not done California. No, no. We really, over the last several years, we got more into, we got away from going back and forth to Europe, and we got more into just making records, because, you yeah. know, when you write as much as I do, you want to see it all the way through to mm -hmm. be able to listen to it in your vehicle while you're driving that sort of thing so i was like well we're going to be like the beatles did that you know they stopped yeah. doing any live shows so i was like we're in our beatles phase now and we're not doing any live shows and we're making <laughs> records and that's it and that's and yeah. that's very 
it's very satisfying for me as a yeah. writer or composer. Uh, I do enjoy performing. I really do. Actually, I enjoy rehearsing even more than the performances for the reason that I just explained. Because sometimes you walk on stage, it's like, oh, rehearsal was amazing. And then you go on stage, it's like, where is, I don't hear anything that I'm supposed to hear. <laughs> so that, that got sort of very disheartening after a while, which is one the, another reason why I stopped doing it. Because like, I'd walk on stage and all I heard was, you know, bass drums. And I'd say, well, what, yeah. what? What note is that? You know, how, how do I sing to that? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So we're hopefully now the uh, technology is better, and it will be enjoyable once again. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Have you any message for your fans in Europe? Uh, we've missed you. We're looking forward to seeing you. We want to come back again and see you all again. And I hope all goes well with our organization, and we can keep coming back and being more, uh, more like we were. Uh, more frequent in, in, the, in the earlier days playing playing for the European audience. Yeah, I hope that yeah. we can do that. Yeah. And uh, I will say, I hope you enjoy the new record. And we've got another one that's not going to be, uh, I don't want it to be four years from now. I want it, I want it to be out within, an, in like, at the most two years. Because I've already, I'm already in the middle of it. We're already doing it. So let's do it. Yes. Two, year, two years yeah. is good. <laughs> two years is enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little long enough wait. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, David, thank you for the interview. And it was a pleasure to talk to you, always. And uh, I enjoy now uh, the festival in Spain when I see you live after a long, long time. All right, well, thank you for inviting me on your show. And um, my pleasure to speak with you. Mi piace, as we say in Italian, mi piace. <laughs>